School staff face many challenges to keep children safe and ready to learn. Keeping children healthy helps improve academic performance and attendance in school. Many students in our district have health care plans for a variety of medical conditions that spell out the supports they'll need during the school day. In this training video, we're going to talk about four common medical conditions that you may encounter. Asthma, anaphylaxis, diabetes, and epilepsy. There are many other medical conditions that may require a student to have an individualized health care plan. If you have a student with an individualized health care plan for one of these conditions, please make sure you're familiar with that health care plan. Any questions you may, you may have, please contact your school nurse. <laughs> there are several laws in the United States to protect the rights of students with medical conditions, such as the Americans with Disabilities Act. Many students in our district may have a 504 accommodation plan in addition to their health care plan that spells out the supports they need during the school day. Asthma is a chronic lung disease that inflames and narrows the airways. Signs and symptoms of an attack could include any of the following. Tightness in chest, wheezing, coughing, and shortness of breath. For any of these symptoms, the student should use their inhaler immediately. An asthma attack can be triggered by a variety of things such as pollen, mold, perfume, exercise, fresh cut grass, smoke, or temperature change. Many students with asthma have an inhaler at school and a health care plan for school. Some students have a consent form on file from their doctor to carry their inhaler on their person while other students keep their inhaler in the school health room. Never ask a student to wait to use his inhaler and never send a student that is having an asthma attack to the office alone. For moderate symptoms such as rapid breathing, wheezing, or pale color, have the office staff bring the inhaler to the student. Staff should remain with the student and keep them in a sitting position. For severe symptoms such as inability to speak, blue fingernails, nasal flaring, or no relief from medication, call 911 immediately. Always provide a calm atmosphere and reassurance to the student. Anxiety can exacerbate their condition. Encourage slow breathing and keep student in an upright position. If a student has an asthma attack and no inhaler is available at school, call 911. Most students use their inhaler independently, but some students may need assistance, especially in times of distress. Student will take off the cap and shake inhaler. Have student breathe out all the way. Student will hold the inhaler to mouth and start breathing in slowly through their mouth and press the inhaler down one time. Encourage the student to hold their breath as you count to 10 slowly. This lets the medicine reach deep into their lungs. Have the student wait about one to two minutes before they take their next puff. After using the inhaler, have the student rinse their mouth with water and spit out if desired. Some younger students may use a spacer for inhaler use. If they use a spacer, press down on the inhaler and have them breathe in slowly for about 30 seconds with the mask held tightly to their face. <coughs> yes, Christina? I think you need to help us Leonardo, are you okay? I don't need my inhaler. Did you bring it with you? Yeah, it's okay. in here. Continue working, kids. He's just having asthma. <coughs> <clears throat> okay, make sure to hold it in for 10 seconds. <clears throat> and just wait a little while before your second one. Are you feeling a little better? A little bit. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> Anaphylaxis is a potentially fatal allergic reaction. 
Many students suffer from life-threatening allergies and therefore have a health care plan at school. The prevalence of food allergies is increasing. Death can occur in minutes from the onset of symptoms. In an allergic reaction, the body releases histamine, which can cause swelling of tissue, itchy or scratchy throat, a hoarse voice or a change in pitch, a rash, body itching, hives, tightening in the throat, or difficulty breathing and wheezing. Coughing to clear the throat, abdominal pain leading to vomiting, swelling of the face, ears, and lips. Some students can have a reaction from just touching an allergen, even if they don't ingest it. In recent years, we have seen an increase in peanut or nut allergies. It is important to inform classroom parents, especially the room parent, if there is a student with food allergies in the class. A letter can be sent home to parents encouraging them not to bring those food products to the classroom. A sample letter is available from Nursing Services. Always educate students regarding not sharing food and also about nut-free eating areas that are available and encourage good hand washing. If a student is allergic to bees and there is a swarm, Keep the student inside to avoid being stung. If another staff member has your student during the day, be sure they receive a copy of their health care plan. A student may have an allergy to bees and not be aware. Another example might be a latex allergy. If a student is having signs of an allergic reaction with no prior history of an allergy, call 911 immediately. Be familiar with your student's health care plan. Some may receive an antihistamine such as Benadryl, which is often ordered for mild symptoms. If a student has asthma, they may also have been prescribed an inhaler. Students with known severe allergies usually have epinephrine prescribed, called an EpiPen or AvaQ. Unlicensed, trained school staff may give epinephrine auto-injectors when a nurse is not available. 911 is always called any time an EpiPen is administered. There's many type of auto-injectors that you may encounter. Here's how they work. Denise, can you call 911? Yes, I'll call 911 right now. I'm gonna get your EpiPen, okay? Just kind of take some deep breaths and stay calm. Okay, go ahead and try that again. So I'm gonna use your leg right here to give you your medicine. Okay, sweet. Here we go. Ready? 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000, 9, 1,000, 10, 1,000, and you're just going to rub it a little bit. Are you doing all right? Just take some deep breaths and try to stay calm. <coughs> ah, I think she's eating <coughs> some peanuts and might be having an allergic reaction. Okay, Christina, have a seat. Let me get your EpiPen. Can you call 911, Karen? <coughs> yes. Blue to the sky, orange to the thigh. <coughs> one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, seven, one thousand, eight, one thousand, nine, one thousand, and ten, one thousand. <coughs> okay, just take nice, slow, deep breaths until the paramedics are on their way. Okay. You feeling better? Mm -hmm. Okay. contains no needle or drug. If you are ready to use, pull off red safety guard. To inject, place black end against outer thigh, then press firmly and hold in place for five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Injection complete.
Stay calm. Hesitating to use epinephrine or not using it all can lead to a life-threatening situation. Don't wait. Remove the EpiPen from the case. EpiPens can be given right through clothing. Pull off the safety cap. Maybe blue or gray, depending on the manufacturer. Hold the black or orange tip near the thigh. Swing and jab firmly until you hear a click. That means the auto injector is functioning. Hold in place and count for 10 seconds. Remove and massage the site for 10 to 15 seconds. Call 911 if they have not been called. Tell them you administered an ep EpiPen to a student with a severe allergic reaction. Stay with the student and observe them until paramedics arrive. Notify school nurse and file an incident report. If parents are not available, staff should accompany the student to the hospital. Diabetes is a metabolic disease where the body fails to produce enough insulin or the cells fail to respond to insulin properly. Students with diabetes must check their blood sugar frequently and have free access to food, water, restroom, and medical supplies. During the school day, a student with diabetes may experience high or low blood sugar levels. If a student feels symptoms, they should test their blood sugar right away. A student can check their blood sugar anywhere on campus. Most students keep a blood sugar testing kit on them and one in the office for backup. Low blood sugar, or hypoglycemia, can be caused by too much insulin, not enough food, or exercise that can also lower blood sugar. Common symptoms of hypoglycemia can include a student may feel lethargic or droopy, their hands may be shaky or sweaty, personality change, or the student may feel hungry. If a student has symptoms, they should test their blood sugar right away. A blood sugar below 70 should be treated immediately. Treat low blood sugar with fast-acting sugar such as juice, 7-Up, or sugar or glucose tablets. The student will retest their blood sugar in 15 minutes. Follow your student's health plan regarding treatment. Notify your nurse and call the parents. Never send a student that has a low blood sugar or is complaining of symptoms to the office alone or leave them unattended. If a student is lethargic, cannot safely swallow a fast-acting sugar, or is unconscious, glucagon should be administered. Then call 911, the nurse, and the parent. This is typically done by trained office staff. To administer glucagon, Remove the flip-off seal from the bottle of glucagon. Remove the needle protector from the syringe and inject the entire contents of the syringe into the bottle of glucagon. You can then remove the syringe from the bottle. Swirl the bottle gently until glucagon dissolves completely. The solution will become clear. Using the same syringe, Hold the bottle upside down, making sure the needle tip remains in the solution. Gently withdraw all of the solution from the bottle. Eject any air bubbles from the syringe. The usual dose is one milligram, but for smaller students, you may give half an adult do dose, 0.5 milligrams. Be familiar with your student's healthcare plan for their dose of glucagon. Inject into a site you can easily access, such as the arm or thigh. Then turn the student on their side. When an unconscious person awakens, he or she may vomit. Turning the student on their side will prevent them from choking. Always call 911 when glucagon is given. If left untreated, a student could lapse into a diabetic coma. High blood sugar or hyperglycemia 
is because of not enough insulin or too much food that is converted to sugar. Common symptoms of hyperglycemia can include thirsty or hungry, stomach ache or vomiting, headache, and frequent bathroom use. To treat the symptoms of high blood sugar, the student should be offered water and follow the health care plan regarding the treatment. This may include administering insulin and the nurse should be notified. If hyperglycemia is left untreated, a student could lapse into a diabetic coma. Epilepsy is a pattern of repeated seizures caused by mixed electrical signals in the brain. There are many different types of seizures. Generalized are produced by electrical impulse throughout the brain. A student may lose consciousness, have muscle rigidity such as a grand mal seizure. In partial seizures, you might see fluttering of the eyelids, loss of awareness, twitching or tick-like motions, or staring with no signs of awareness. During a seizure, remain calm and talk in a soothing manner. Do not restrain the student. Begin timing at the first sign of unusual activity. Protect the student from hazards. Do not attempt to put anything in the mouth. Turn student on the side if student is on the ground. Do not move the student unless they are in danger. Observe the student for airway, breathing, and circulation. Extend chin to facilitate breathing if breathing difficulty is noted. It's okay, Raphael. You're all right. I'm right here with you, okay? It's okay. It's all right, Raphael. You're okay. Call 911 for any seizure lasting longer than five minutes or as specified in the student's individualized health care plan. Call 911 if the student turns blue or appears to have difficulty breathing. If a student vomits during a seizure, if a student inhales water during a seizure, or if a seizure results in a fall with a possible head injury. After the seizure, comfort and reassure the student as the seizure ends. Protect the privacy of the student. They may soil clothing during a seizure. Student may be exhausted after the seizure and need to rest. Notify parents and school nurse and document in seizure log. Some high risk activities, such as swimming or playing on an elevated play structure, will need clearance from a neurologist. Consult the health care plan for specific guidelines for your student. If a student has no previous history of epilepsy, any seizure is a 911 call. Some students may have a drug called diastat ordered to stop seizure activity. Diastat is administered rectally. Diastat would be administered only by your school nurse or staff that's completed a diastat training program. These students have an emergency health care plan in place for the administration of diastat. You may have an opportunity to educate students about certain medical conditions. But remember, a student's medical information is confidential and should not be shared without student and parental consent. Healthcare plans should be shared with any staff that works with your student during the school day. For example, if you have a student with a healthcare plan that is pulled out to learning center, art, music, Please make sure that those teachers get a copy of the health care plan. Also, if you're going to be absent, please make sure that a copy of the student's health care plan is in your binder. 
Thank so you. keeping students safe at school is a responsibility that all school staff share. If you have any questions about students' health care needs, please contact one of your school nurses.